Today we're going to take a plain Golang web server and convert it to a REST API. Let's jump right in. Obviously you can do whatever you like with, uh, with the code you write, uh, but for this example we'll be accessing the YouTube API and uh, pulling subscriber stats. So the very first thing that we're going to do here in order to keep things clean is we're going to create a new file called youtubehandler.go. Uh, this is mainly just for organizational purposes since both will be part of the same package. Go is going to treat these as if they're in the same in the same file. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the git channel stats function from main.go and pull it over to the YouTube handler. And inside of this function and any additional functions is where we will define the functionality which actually pulls the information from the YouTube API and produces the output that we're looking for. Just a quick note, this is part two of a series and you missed part one. There's a link in the description and a card in the top right corner. So when creating a REST API, the first thing that you want to do is identify what your response should look like. In Go, you should create your response as a type. In this case, in this example, we're going to create a type called YouTube stats. And I'm going to add some properties to that uh, in the form of a struct that's going to identify the different data points that we're going to return as a JSON object. So our type YouTube stats has four properties, one of them called subscribers, another one called channel name, another one called minutes watched, and another one called views. Uh, subscribers is an integer, channel name is a string, minutes watched is an integer, and views is an integer. The idea here is that when get channel stats returns Back, uh, returns information back, it will be returning a JSON object that has those properties. The next thing I'm going to do just to stub in the response is in the get channel stats function, I'm going to create a variable of type YouTube stats and I'm going to go ahead and just put some data in here to uh, mock up what a response would look like. So as you can see here, I'm just going to say five subscribers, my channel for the name, 50 minutes watched and uh, 100 views. The next step is to return that information to the browser and we want to return it in a JSON format. So we're, forced, we're first going to set a response he header here. So again on W, which is the response writer we're going to say w.header.set and we're going to set the content type to application json on the next line we're going to write a status so here w.write header and we're passing the http status okay which is just a 200 response which is what you'd expect from a successful response from a rest api on a git call and then we are going to encode the response to json so here we're going to call json uh, which is the json package dot new encoder and pass in the response writer to that and then dot encode and then the variable of the the youtube stats that we created above that returns an error if there's an error so if there is we'll catch that and we will uh, just panic if that happens. Otherwise, the response will automatically be encoded to JSON and written to W. Since I moved the function to the new file youtubehandler.go, you can no longer run this application by just running uh, slash app slash main.go. You have to actually tell the Go uh, compiler to look at the entire directory to make sure it's getting all the files it needs. So the new command to run it is go run dot slash app slash dot slash dot dot dot, which is just telling it to run everything in there, and that way it can find all of the functionality. All right, now we switch to the browser and hit refresh. You can see that it does spit out the answer. Um, there is going to be one problem here, though, and you'll notice that the um, the properties on the JSON response have capital letters starting with them. So subscriber, channel name, minutes watched, they start with capital letters. And that's not really a proper JSON response. So now we have to fix that. In order to fix that, we're going to put annotations on the YouTube stats type. And that's uh, pretty straightforward in Go. What we're going to do here is go through each one of these. We're just going to say JSON colon and then what the property name should be when it actually prints it out in JSON. So pretty much the same thing, just taking the capital letters off. Make sure you get quotes around those property names. All right, now let's restart the server and try it again. There, much better. Now that's a proper JSON response. The next part of this walkthrough is going to be accessing the YouTube API to populate that information with, uh, with real live information from YouTube. In order to access the YouTube API for my use case, I needed to have a YouTube API key. And I'm setting it as an 
an environment variable and accessing it here. So in the function new router, we're going to access the environment variable YouTube API key and set it to the YT API key variable. Now in the get channel stance function, we are going to pass the key as the letter K and it's a string. Back over in main.go, we'll do a little bit of error checking here and say, if the YouTube API key is empty, then we should return an error and fatal the application. And you can see that it works. To access the YouTube API, you first need to go to the Google Cloud Console and enable the YouTube Data API v3. This is going to allow your user to access the YouTube API. I'm also going to enable the YouTube Analytics API for potential future integrations. The next thing you want to do is go to the credentials screen and say create new credential and create a new API key and then edit the API key. Give it a good name so you know what it is and you can delete it later if you need to. Choose the option to restrict the key so it only has access to the things that you need. So we're gonna choose the YouTube Analytics API and the YouTube Data API v3, meaning that this key only has access to those two APIs. It's a good security measure to follow. And then go ahead and hit save. All right, so back to the YouTube handler, we're gonna go ahead and import the YouTube v3 package. And this is what we'll be using to access the YouTube API. Did that a little backwards there, but go ahead and create a context because you'll need it to pass to the YouTube API package. And then uh, we're gonna call YouTube.NewService and pass it the context. And then if you check the function signature, you can see you can pass it afterwards any number of options. So in this case, we need to pass it the uh, API key, and that would be option dot with API key, and then the key itself, which is represented by the variable K. I'm going to go ahead and run gobod tidy to pull in the necessary imports and get the red squiggly lines to go away. There you go, much better. And we'll vendor those because that's what we do. Now that we have the service, uh, we're going to go ahead and create the actual API call we're going to make to the YouTube API, and we're going to use that service. So um, the service struct has a number of uh, different functions that you can call on its properties. In this case, it's going to be the channels property and the list function. So uh, YouTube service dot channels dot list and then give it the um, the things that you want to retrieve when it is pulling that list and we're going to assign this to a variable called call which represents the API call we're actually going to make so for roughly 15 minutes uh, from this point I struggled to get this to actually return the thing I was looking for and I don't like to hide this kind of stuff because this is actually what programming is you have to try things until you get them to work we'll we'll get to the end and I'll show you exactly what it is you need to do, but I am going to just quickly fast forward through all of this after I explain uh, the, the trouble that I ran into. Uh, the first one was the YouTube service, uh, the YouTube.new service call was actually failing, but I wasn't catching the error. And the reason it was failing is because I didn't set the environment variable with the key. So it was not passing the right key. It, there was an old key in there. It was not passing the right key and it was failing to get any kind of response back. And I wasn't catching it. So I didn't know. And I kept trying things over and over and over again until uh, eventually I wised up and, and caught that error and, and did that right. Um, the second thing that that I ran into was that uh, just using an API key to access the Google API only gives you access to a certain amount of information. If you want to go any further than that, you have to use OAuth and actually get permission from the person that's using the application to access their Google data. So in this example, all I really wanted was uh, basic information about my own channel. So I didn't need anything more than the API key. But what I was missing was not passing my channel ID to the call. So so it knew what channel to access and what data to return. All right, here's the part where I wised up and realized that I needed to get the ID in there. So you can see on line 37, call.id and then the ID of your channel and then dot do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just refresh this and you'll see that uh, the response spits out in the terminal and that's actually the information that I'm looking for. So from here, I was able to take the response and actually do some additional debugging just to make sure I was getting the information I was looking for and then begin to populate the actual response uh, to the browser. So here I'm just going to print the title of the channel uh, to the terminal and make sure that that's working to make sure I'm not completely out of my mind. So here, response to item zero dot snippet dot title, and then go ahead and close and restart the server 
server to make sure it gets the new code, then refresh the page, and then we should see, hopefully, a, uh, a response in the terminal here printing out the name of my channel. All right, success. It says Ask Cloud Architect. That's what I like to see. Now we can go ahead and map the values in the response to a real JSON response and get ourselves an API. But first we'll go ahead and just clean up these errors a little bit. So if there is an error because it failed to create the service, uh, which is what made me fail a whole bunch earlier, we want the API to return something that says that there was a failure. So in this case, we're gonna call W, which is the response writer, dot write header, and then we are going to write a uh, 400 level error indicate that there was a problem with the response. All of the response codes are in the HTTP package as constants, and I will put a link to that uh, in the description. We'll do the same thing if we get an error in the response to the actual API call. And now to populate the uh, YouTube stats variable with the actual data instead of the stubbed in data we made earlier in the demo. And again, just to make sure we have a true uh, working REST API, I'm not just going to panic here if the encoding fails. We're actually just going to write the status pad request uh, back to the server as well. So a 400 level error is returned if it doesn't work out. Uh, if it does, then the response will be returned in JSON format. Now we'll go ahead and restart the server and we'll give this a shot. Hey, look at that. It works. Now we don't want to be leaving my channel ID uh, hard-coded in this application so that way other people can grab it and, and use it if you want to. I'll put a link to the uh, to this uh, GitHub project in the description below. So we want to pass the channel ID into this function as well and we'll follow the same pattern that we did for the YouTube API key. The channel ID will be passed into this get channel stats function and then we will uh, go ahead and get that in main and pass it in. So go back to main and following the same pattern that we did with the YouTube API key, we're going to assign a new variable. And in this case, we're going to get the environment variable of YouTube channel ID and assign it to the variable YT channel ID. And then going back down to mux.git, we're gonna pass that new variable into get channel stats. And now off screen, I'm going to set YouTube channel ID environment variable in my environment uh, so I don't fail like I did earlier and then we'll try it out again to make sure everything worked out and it still works as expected finally we'll just go ahead and clean up some of the debugging code and this last bit here is just an if statement that is going to check and make sure that the response we get back from the youtube api actually has items in it and it's not just an empty response essentially if the response length is greater than zero meaning that there's one response in there we can then try to gather information from response.item0 without getting a nil pointer exception and throwing, a, throwing an error and crashing the server. And there you have it. That's how you make a very basic REST API that serves a JSON response in Go.